What is up everybody and welcome back to the next episode of the crack a pack series today uh, We are opening up a pack of cons of Tarkir. So this is a really interesting set uh, a lot of interesting cards here Obviously the big stuff is going to be the fetch lands uh, That's really what I'm hoping to see but hopefully we get something interesting nonetheless uh, We of course are going to be looking at this from a limited perspective So we will do our best to determine what a first round draft pick would be at least a halfway reasonable one uh, Feel free if you disagree to roast me in the comment section uh, with that though of course we are going to go through every single card and we kick it off with a Mardu uh, War Shrieker so this is a 3-3 three, three for 3 and a red it has raids so when it enters the battlefield if you attacked with a creature this turn uh, you also get to add red a white and a black to your mana pool uh, so if you don't know uh, the cons of Tarkir block uh, was all centered around basically three color mechanics so in this case Mardu being red white and black uh, and each one kind of featured their own like specific mechanics in this case Raid uh, and I actually do like this card. It's actually quite good. So it's a 3-3 three, three, four, 4 which is not amazing But uh, if you can trigger raid which in red and in Mardu specifically is going to be hopefully a little bit easier than some of the other uh, cons uh, This actually is really really good because you're able to uh, Add some mana to your mana pool and ideally pull something else out not just this card So it kind of allows you to do two plays per turn uh, which I do like it's not like amazing by any means it's a little bit late game for like a red deck uh, but it is really really good at just powering out multiple things which a red deck is looking to do so I really like this card uh, not amazing but not bad either uh, feed the clan is an instant for one and a green you gain five life it also features ferocious which uh, was unique to this set so whenever you gain ten life instead uh, you, excuse me, you gain 10 life instead if you control a creature with power 4 or greater. Uh, so f with power 4 or greater is really the key here. Uh, ferocious triggers on a lot of creatures in this set, especially green creatures. Uh, there were quite a number of really, really good ferocious cards uh, that did just a lot of, uh, it, it did a lot of like board presence stuff. It really boosted your board. Uh, card like this, not so much. Obviously, it's not really all that good. Uh, this is actually I believe a popper card if I'm not mistaken a lot of popper uh, decks run this as sideboard But uh, in general not very exciting at all for limited uh, Just guy student is a 1-3 for one and a white and it does feature prowess So whenever you cast a non creature spell this gets plus one plus one until the end of the turn uh, Prowess being a really really powerful mechanic uh, a lot of fun It's not the best in limited unless you're in like a spells matters deck uh, which is I mean a solid deck in this uh, format Jeskai spells matters that kind of thing really really is not a bad archetype to be in Unfortunately this creature not very exciting. Uh, it's okay, but it's just a one three for two Yes, you can trigger prowess on it But it's not like it's gonna be attacking most of the time just because it's really there for defense So I'm not a huge fan of this card in general. Not really all that great. Uh, Dutiful Return is a sorcery for three and a black return up to two target creature cards from your graveyard to your hand I actually don't mind effects like this uh, Sometimes they can be really really powerful Especially if your opponents really burned all of their removal on some of your bigger creatures You just bring them back and then you're able to replay them uh, I don't like having too many effects like this in a deck because a lot of times you just won't have a very like a, a very high value target we'll say uh, but having one of these uh, especially on turn four might actually be really important. So uh, I do like this I don't like it more than the war shrieker, uh, but it is definitely a decent card if I was in that uh, sort of black grindy deck uh, Whirlwind adept is four in a blue for a four two It does have hex proof so it can't be the target of opponents spells or abilities and it also does feature prowess So it's gonna get a boost every time you cast a non creature spell something I didn't mention with the first prowess It is non creature. It's not just instant and sorcery That's really really important because there can be artifacts enchantments things like that that you might actually run in the deck uh, that will trigger prowess for you so very very important uh, actually really like this card so uh, four two hexproof is pretty solid. Yes, it's not great in combat, but the prowess kind of helps aid that. So it kind of gets you around the low toughness. Uh, and so ideally, this is going to hopefully get in for a decent amount of damage. And they, it's not like they can point and click remove it. They do have to trade for it. So I think this beats the war shrieker for me so far. Uh, I really do like that card. 
Uh, Scout the Borders is a sorcery for two and a green. Reveal the top five cards of your library. You may put a creature or a land card among them into your hand and put the rest into your graveyard. Uh, for anybody who knows modern and knows ancient stirrings, this is kind of a similar effect, though it obviously is not colorless, it's creature or land. Uh, and I like this card. I mean, I, I don't like playing this card, but in certain decks, this kind of makes sense, uh, especially if you're in like a multicolored format, which this tends to be. Uh, smoothing out your land drops is really, really important. Uh, that being said, this is by no means a first pickable card. Uh, it's definitely playable in some decks, uh, but I would not run it in quite a number of them as well, so not a huge fan of it. Uh, Dismal Backwater is a land. It enters the battlefield tapped. When it enters the battlefield, you also gain a life, and it taps for one blue or one black. Uh, this is obviously just a common land cycle in this set, and they actually are really, really important. Gaining the life is nice, yes, but uh, really because this is a three color format, being able to have dual lands in the set, especially at common, is really, really useful. Most of the time you're not gonna be wanting to pick these super early, but uh, they will be around. You will want to pick them up, especially if you do jump into three color, maybe even four color, depending on the color or the, the cards that you've been passed. So I do like these. I do think they're worth picking up when you can get them, but not super early. Uh, Sultai Banner is an artifact for three mana, so you can tap it to add black, green, or blue to your mana pool, and then you can pay all three, tap it, and sacrifice it to draw a card. Again, part of the cycle that really helps smooth out your mana. Uh, I do like these. I'm not sold on them in every strategy. Uh, for instance, the Mardu is very aggro-focused, uh, and so I wouldn't necessarily want to take turn three off to play a banner, but... Uh, and something like Sultai, that actually could be playable. Uh, I do think that there are instances where this is going to be good. It does technically ramp you, uh, and it fixes you, which is really important. So I do like these. Again, they're not first, first pickable cards by any means, but if you know what colors you're in or you want to potentially splash a color or something along those lines, picking up a banner or two is definitely worth it. I wouldn't run too many of them in a draft deck just because... It is a three mana artifact and it's not doing anything to impact the board, but you do get to sack and draw it if you need to. So there is some upside late game. Just in general, they're okay. Uh, Disowned Ancestor is a zero four for one black and it does have outlast. So for one and a black, you can tap it and put a plus one plus one counter on this creature. You can only outlast it as a sorcery. So you can only do this during your turn. Uh, I actually, this is kind of, one of those cards that sends a red flag for me. It feels like a bit of a trap. Uh, I do think that it can be good, but like you're kind of all in on outlasting this guy uh, if you do take it and play it turn one. So I don't really know that I'm a huge fan of it, but if I would try it out, I guess I would say. Uh, I didn't actually get to play with this card at all. I did draft this set a little bit, but I never played with this card, so I don't know if it's actually all that worth it. Uh, it's a lot of mana to sink into a card every turn if you're trying to really boost it up, and they could just remove it, so not a huge fan of that. Uh, Siegecraft is an enchant creature for three and a white, and the enchanted creature gets plus two, plus four. So these enchant creatures are never my favorite. Uh, there are definitely instances where they are good. Uh, this is technically just a buff, though, and like you just remove it, and then you got two for one. Not a huge fan of that. Obviously, the the upside to enchant creatures is that they can take over the game. If your opponent just doesn't have a removal spell or an answer for whatever card you put this on, uh, ideally, it can just kind of run over your opponent's board and really, really close out a game quickly, which is nice. There's a lot of upside there. Unfortunately, there's also a lot of downside, which is that you open yourself up to that free two for one by the opponent if they just happen to have the removal spell. And I don't like opening myself up to something like that. I'd rather kind of hold back be able to play multiple threats or do something a little bit differently instead of just piling on stuff onto one creature. Now I will say things that uh, an enchant creature that maybe draws a card or throws a token onto the field or something like that, that kind of mitigates the downside in my mind. Uh, there are definitely cards like that that I would love to play, but in this case, it's literally just a buff, so I don't know that I'm really a fan of it. Uh, Burn Away is an instant for four and a red. It deals six damage to target creature. When that creature dies this turn, exile all cards from its controller's graveyard. This is just premium removal. Yes, it is five mana, but it is instant speed and it is six damage to a creature, which is gonna kill just about anything that it needs to. Uh, this is really, really good. It also has graveyard upside, which 
I don't know is super relevant in this set, but uh, it's definitely worth noting. And so I really, really like this card. I think I like this more than the Adept for sure. Uh, this is just a powerful removal spell. Uh, Bellowing Saddle Brute is a 4-5 for 3 and a black, and it has Raid. When it enters the battlefield, you lose 4 life unless you attacked with a creature this turn. So this is kind of the downside of Raid. So if you weren't able to trigger it, uh, you lose 4 life, which kind of sucks. But it is a 4-5 for 4, which is really good value. Uh, that's like super, super good. I still like Burn Away a little bit more. Uh, it's just going to be solid in any deck you play, uh, you're, you're actually playing in. And it opens you up to sort of the Spells Matters or the Mardu, like aggro. It kind of keeps you a little bit more open. While this is really, really focused on the aggro and just kind of beating face mechanic, which is perfectly fine, don't get me wrong, but I'd rather have Burn Away. Uh, Raider Spoils is three and a black for an enchantment. Creatures you control get plus one plus zero. Uh, whenever a warrior you control deals combat damage to a player, you may pay one life, and if you do, you draw a card. This is an okay card. I, I, these are weird. Uh, so it's an enchantment that buffs your whole team, which is always good. If you do have warriors, which there are quite a lot of in this set, uh, then it can be worth it because you will hopefully be able to draw at least a few cards off of this. Uh, and just getting some card advantage is really good. The downside being you have to take a turn off to play a card like this. And ideally that is kind of the uh, turn four is really important. Like you'd rather be doing something on the board that's really, really going to impact like a big creature or something like that. Yes, a buff to creatures can be that. So I'm not saying that this is terrible, but uh, I think I'd rather have a turn four play like the saddle brute or something along those lines where it's really going to start like pressuring the opponent immediately. This, while it does give a little bit more pressure to every creature you play, is just a little slow. Uh, and so I'm not like a huge fan of that. It's also a bit of a build around card with the warrior mechanic. Uh, and so I'm not on this, this hype train with this card, but in general, I don't think it's bad. I think you can definitely get away with it in certain instances and our rare, there we go, a wooded foothills. So this is part of the fetch land cycle. You can tap it and pay a life and sacrifice it to search your library for a mountain or a forest card and put it onto the battlefield and then shuffle your library. Uh, so if you don't know, if you don't play modern or any of the eternal formats, uh, like legacy or vintage, um, the fetch lands are really, really premium cards. They basically, uh, are able to pull out a lot of the original dual lands as well as the shock lands and things like that. Uh, and because they can do that, they are very valuable. Uh, I'm super happy to open one just in terms of value. However, this is not a card that I would pick in draft unless I was already in the colors. It's not like a bad card by any means, but... I'd much rather have something like Burn Away where it's an actual spell. It's going to be actually impacting the game. This is just to smooth out mana, which is good. You should take that at certain points in your draft, 100%. But uh, this is a situation where it's like, do I rare draft or do I just take a card that is actually going to be good for a deck? I would much rather take the card that's good for the deck. And so in that case, I'm going to take Burn Away. I think that's definitely going to be my pick. Very happy to open Wooded Foothills. I believe that's one of the fetch lands I actually need a couple copies of, so I'm perfectly happy with that. But if you disagree with me, let me know in the comment section below. I'm happy to have that conversation, but I think that's what I would pick. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. If you really enjoyed it, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack video.